Infinite Design presents a tutorial series by Jay Graham and Jian Hong. How to make a million dollar video game for just a few hundred be dollars. Utilizing the power of Platformer Pro, Puppet 2D, Hexels 2, Fire 2D, and Fungus, plus a few more. Win. Win! We are excited to be able to give away a license for Platformer Pro and Puppet 2D and Hexels 2 and Far 2D to one of our lucky YouTube subscribers. And download the free game assets with animations to use in your game. Yep, that's right. We're giving away awesome quality 2D assets free to use. How awesome is that? It's awesome! We start our journey into the 2D realm of unique design by making our art in Hexels 2. Our goal was to make a cool looking stylish game and it led us down many a path. But once we found Hexels and its grid based drawing, we knew immediately we found something special. The grid constrains the ability to draw anything you want, forcing you to a style that you can't break free from, and we just love it. For the beginners who have never used Hexels, it's basically like Photoshop. Grab a brush and start drawing. But don't worry, we'll get more in depth with it later. Our game is Tack and Yob. It's about two aliens who come together for the adventure of a lifetime. Where we go from there, no one knows. As you journey with us, you have the chance to alter or add to the development of this game. It should be fun, so don't hesitate to comment. You never know how your comments could inspire us. Isn't that right, Muffin? Yeah. Muffin's one of our cats, and she'll be here clicking community buttons and stepping on keyboards all the way through. Isn't that right, Muffin? Yeah, you will. If you haven't figured out, we're starting with the title screen. It's the first thing that we're going to set up in Unity with Platformer Pro. You can start here or not. Start anywhere you like. In Hexels, I turned on the glow effect. I really like this glow effect, I think it looks great. Don't recommend using it in heavy scenes where you got a lot going on, because the glow is basically a gradient, and we all know that a gradient is the evil enemy of processors. So, use it sparingly, or tactful, or tack and yobful. That was a terrible joke. When we're finished in hexels, we put everything on layers, as needed. Then we name them appropriately. We run the script export layers separately. Hexels will only export at a maximum res, which is about 8,000 pixels. So you'll need to lower the res in Photoshop, unless of course it's the future and you're making an 8K cell phone game or something like that. The future. Speaking of the future, it's now time for Platformer Pro. Once you have it downloaded and imported, start with the samples. There's so many tasty samples for you to try. I suggest you try them all and let them ignite your creativity. Once ready, open Command Pro. I think it's a great starting point. It's got shooting, wall climb, grenades, and a title screen. With input and volume select, now that's just awesome. I'm going to make a prefab of all the Command Bro title screen elements and call it Title Make. I then bring it into my title screen scene as a reference. 
When I recorded this, Unity 5.3 was not out yet. Just think of how awesome it would have been if I could just drag the whole scene into my scene. Merge scene. Mm, that's some sexy stuff. I took my exported layers from Hexels and I merged them into a single Photoshop file using the bridge. Now we need to harness the power of GitHub and download the Photoshop importer script for Unity. It sets up the PSD layers, naming, resolution, and lets you set which atlas Unity puts the sprites on. It's free and it's awesome. Voila! I'm just testing some color tints on the letters, finding that perfect pink, aka Man Salmon. I bring in that title make prefab of Platformer Pro's title screen goodies, so I can apply my visuals to its code. Targeting the main menu, which jumps on screen in play mode. I adjust the position of the UI and under main menu look for visible content and find the pointer image. You're going to want to make some art and replace this, but I'll get to that later, so I'll put both of these things on my old to-do list. Right now I want to animate my title screen, so let's do that now. I set up the hierarchy of my art so they all fall under one animator and thus one animation timeline. Then I simply animate the scale values and visibility of each object to bring the title screen shield to life. For the letters, I create a fake flip effect. It's easy to do, so don't flip the table. Just keyframe at negative 1 in the X scale, move the timeline, and then keyframe at positive 1 in the X scale. It's that flippin' easy. I make a second anim clip to hold the finished movement. It's not necessary, but sometimes I like to do this so I can add an effect in there. If you don't want to make a second clip, you could just disable looping in the first clip. I kind of want a gradient in the background. And way back in Unity 4.3, I found a very cheap way to do it with the UI. Probably not a secret, most of you know how to do it. Here it is, I create a small 8 pixel image, but the smaller the resolution, the better this works. For this one, I draw the pixels decreasing in opacity. This becomes a gradient from white to alpha when you drop the sprite into a canvas image component, and then stretch it full screen. You could do this from white to black, and color tint it, or from color to color if you feel so inclined. I like to drop the alpha cause less is more. This technique serves as a great way to make 2D lights and god rays and things of that nature. I'll be giving away a pack of images that make good lights and gradient skies and god rays later on. I've made a lot over time, so keep your eyes peeled for that download coming soon. Time to make a start button. I added a canvas with a button and art that I previously made in Hexels. This is just placeholder art. I'll do more work on it later, maybe add a nice fancy overstate animation. I animate the time the button appears on screen to coincide with the title shield animation.
Right now, the Command Bro Start button loads the Command Bro level. So under Main Menu, Menu Item Start Game, there is a load scene action with a supporting string for the level to load. We will need to change this once we have a level to load. I duplicate this scene by saving as with a new name. This is the scene I want the Command Bro UI to load on top of. So I'm back to figuring out the best UI position. Changing the rec transform will not change the position due to the FX UI move script. So look to that script and simply adjust the target position as desired. I bring in placeholder art for that pointer image. Mm, looks good enough. I duplicate the scene again and save as. This one will be after you click the Command Bro UI start button. It's basically the beginning of the game. Beginning of game development, there's a lot of placeholders, so I begin by disabling everything and then adding a UI text that says it begins, so I know it has begun. Let's start by hooking it all up. Add all the appropriate scenes to the build index. Everybody knows about the build index. No one has ever forgotten to add a scene to the build index, right? Now let's add our scene to the supporting string that I talked about earlier in the Command Bro menu item start game. Um, I changed that pointer image, didn't I? Now I hook up my start experience button by creating a script to change scenes and use the button's on click event to trigger it. Scripts are provided. Add the script to an empty game object and drag the game object into the button's on click event. Then select the function to load your level. Sexy time has arrived. I might need to further adjust the UI elements position, size, and spacing based on what screen we're on, but I'll worry about that later. I add a white sprite and drop the alpha to further fade the background's elements so I can focus on the UI. For style, I add a simple position change animation. It slides in, now let's make it slide out. I duplicate the scene by saving as. I copy the animator and the anim clip, then rename them. Delete the clip from the copied animator. Now add the renamed copied anim clip and reverse the animation keyframes. Wax on, wax off, daniel -san. Add the new scene to the build index. Now I have to replace this scene with the scene I had previously put in the supporting string of the start button. Once we wax off, we will load the It Begins intro scene using Wait For Seconds. Now it's time to do some fungus. Fungus is like a timeline that executes scripts, animations, triggers, and a complex character dialogue system. And best of all, it's free. Oprah says, look under your chair. But I say, look in the asset store, because everyone gets a fungus. Our first use of this asset will be a simple one indeed. Add the flowchart window, then create a flowchart. Click on new block. This will be the first block of commands that fungus executes. I named mine start. Click on the plus to add your first keyframe, so to speak. I choose wait. And in the option, I put one second. The next keyframe I choose is to load scene. And that's where I add the It Begins scene. It's all set and it's looking great. Enough hooking stuff up, now it's time for some art. I found a pixel art gem on the World Wide Web and it's called Graphics Gem. It's a wonderful tool for creating pixel animations, which makes animating pixels easy and extremely gratifying. And it's free, and you can't be free. I added a grid and set it to 10 pixels on a 200 by 200 document. Graphic scale top feature without doubt is its preview window. This preview always plays your animation as you make it, which makes animating pixels easy and extremely gratifying. Once you have a second frame, that animation preview gets going. It's amazing how pixels can tell a story or drive an emotion, so let your imagination fly and go wild. Whether you're creating an animation or a particle system, you are limitless, so have fun.
When you're finished, export a combined image, one column, no padding. Save type as ping with alpha. Once saved, open it in Photoshop and make all the pixels white so you can tint them in Unity to any color you like. In Unity, set the sprite mode to multiple and slice as needed. Do you need a slice tutorial? Drag all the sprites into the scene and Unity makes an animation all set up for you. Tint if desired. Adjust the scale if desired. Duplicate and rotate if desired. I put this effect in the appropriate scenes and finally it begins which actually ends this episode thanks for watching stay tuned stay awesome check the description for gold then comment and subscribe